Hey everybody, this is a review of the Maze Alpha. So I've been using this phone for about four days now and I like it a lot. In fact, I think this is the best budget bezel-less phone out there. I think it's better than the Doogie Mix, which I used for a couple of weeks too. I like it better, I like the Maze Alpha better for two reasons. The first is the screen. This is a 1080p display, whereas on a Doogie Mix is only a 720p. So when you open up a web page and you look at photos, and read text, you can totally see the difference. Look at how crisp this is. This is 1080p. Another thing I like is, even though the phone uses soft navigation buttons usually, you can in fact hide the button and still navigate within the phone with the fingerprint reader. So how it works is, let me show you. So how it works is, when you tap this fingerprint reader once, it goes back, so it'll be it'll be like if you press this triangle button here. If you long press on the fingerprint reader, it'll go all the way home as if you press the circle button. So let me hide the button, and let's go, go into the app. So I'm gonna click into here. So now if I wanna go back, I just tap it once, and it goes back to the Instagram app. Now if I wanna go all the way back home, I long press, it goes all the way back home. So that's pretty cool. I'm able to hide the, that means I'm able to hide the navigation button most of the time and just get around with using this. So now let's talk about the camera. For a budget phone, I think the camera is pretty solid. It's it's not going to compare it to a Samsung Galaxy S8, but for 180 bucks, I don't think you can complain. Let me turn auto rotation. Okay, so as you can see, colors turn out pretty good with good details, except it's um, the photos tend to be on the cool side. So as you can see here, it's kind of blue, but otherwise it's okay. This is, the details on this is quite good. This is on one time zoom. This is on two times zoom. Details is quite good for a phone that's 180 bucks. So let's check out this video I shot. Video comes out quite excellent too, except there's no optical, except there's no optical image stabilization. So as you can see, I'm a walk right now. I'm walking right now, and the cam and the video is just a little bit bumpy. I'll put more photo samples up right now, so you can have a b better look. Performance wise, six gigs of RAM in this phone, so I didn't really have any problems. I was jumping in and out apps really fast. Although when I ran a couple of games, like when I ran Power Rangers, it took a bit longer to load. So as you can see, like it has to boot up again. But once it boots up, the graphics was good and the game operates just fine. Okay, let's try another game. So playing games on this and just consuming media in general, it looks really good because of the screen, because of the bezel's design. So this is really cool. Like it's, it's a really immersive experience. Let's check out some video. So as a media consumption device. So there's only one speaker down below. This is a fake. This is a. F there's only one speaker grill. This is fake, and unfortunately, it's easily muffled. But it is what it is. So it's quite good watching videos on this because because there's like almost no bezels on here. Although this is pretty huge, but it's actually okay. It's almost like you can hold the phone. You can hold on to this bezel. Viewing angle is pretty good. So overall, I would say this is a pretty strong display. Let's check out Geekbench really quick. I ran a test yesterday. As expected on um, on single core, the score is not it's not that well. It only scored at 846 in single core. But in multi-core, 3868, that's not bad at all. 
phone quality on this is excellent that's because even though there's supposedly no top bezel may still manage to put an earpiece at the top that's really impressive because you know if you think about it the samsung galaxy s8 is getting a lot of attention because of the slim top and bottom bezel but this phone has even slimmer bezels and it didn't have to do away with the earpiece like the xiaomi phone now granted the, the galaxy s8 has an iris sensor here so it's not quite a fair comparison but this is really good that they have an earpiece here instead of having to vibrate sound to you like the xiaomi mi mix and they even fit in a proximity sensor here i know because i use an app called Glance plus which is like a like a way to give you a, a f an ambient display like on the moto phone so this is Glance plus so what it does is when the screen is off you can wave over the proximity sensor and it will turn on like a fake always on display okay why is it not working let me check i might have accidentally turned it off okay it's on okay see so you turn it on so you have a notification that it'll show here too so that's pretty cool that's an app i like so this app wouldn't be working if there wasn't a proximity sensor here and you know there are a lot of little shortcuts about this phone that i like too so for example you can draw on the phone to turn on an app and these apps you can set it so whatever you want like so as you can see i set it so if you draw a circle it turns on the camera if you draw c it'll open up chrome you still have to put your finger on the fingerprint reader to log in but other than that it goes straight to chrome and all these are customizable so let's check them out they're under here gesture unlock so you can do a lot of stuff like double tap to wake which is very useful and the and the drawing alphabets launch some things here so for it's for example Right now, drawing Z does nothing, so let's pick something. So let's do Z for Instagram, and I'll turn it on. So now if I draw Z, it should go straight to Instagram. So that's really cool, and I like that you can set whatever app you want. It's these little things that make the phone very useful, because... I like the Samsung Galaxy a lot, but they don't really give you these kind of options. I mean, I would love to be able to just draw a circle to launch a camera or draw an F or C to go to Facebook or something. I can do this with this. Although it's a bit slow launching, and when you do this on a OnePlus 5, it launches really fast. So I really like this display. Look at how the 6-inch 1080p, look at how immersive it looks when you're looking at when you're looking at full screen stories on Instagram, you can hide the navigation button. So it just lo looks amazing. 480 bucks. This is a really good deal, I think, for this phone. Considering that if you want to buy this phone, it's like 700 bucks. So now this is a better phone, but 700 bucks versus 180. So this is the base alpha. I like this phone a lot. Um, if you're interested in purchase, purchasing, there's a link below or, or please just check my Forbes site for more reviews. Thanks for watching.